Um, well, it's Father's Day. I, 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 I don't know whether you're aware. <laughs> you, you might have, maybe some of you were lost in worship, but halfway during the song, a letter came out, and, and, and that, it's because th- that projector there blew up, and smoke started coming uh, out of it. And <laughs> some of you are freaking out right now, but uh, it, it was just that it's, smoke started coming out, and that went off, and they turned off the whole system. But I want you to notice that men handled it. Come on. Oh, they just, they, they got a ladder, they came up. <laughs> Helen told me, projectors on fire. <laughs> fire! <laughs> but the men, they just handled it. <laughs> Come on, give it up to the men. I mean, it's just like, they just got a ladder, they just climbed up, they secured it, turned it off, turned it back on. We're here celebrating men today. Come on. <laughs> That was all planned? (laughs) Not. But hey, I just want to give you a couple of updates before we jump into the uh, message. Number one, we're back in our offices now during the week. So yes, yes, back in our... (laughs) Pastor Anita's exciting. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And excited. I've got to be honest, I nearly knocked her out during the worship. Because I was doing that, she stood too close to me. And then that song where it says, and I throw up my hand. I nearly knocked her out, didn't I? She's like, Pugh. she's like, dear, you just punched me. I was like, I didn't. That was just my finger. <laughs> That's how strong I am. But we're back in our offices, and uh, that's, uh, that's cool. So, uh, you know, if you're a need to come into the church or whatever. We, we are here. The building work is still going on, still lots to do, but we are on the home stretch, which I am so excited about. The second change that I need to, or announcement that I need to give you is we're, we're going to be changing our service times uh, just so you can know. So this service is going to stay the same. This is, this is, this is staying the same, but we're going to move our 1040 uh, five service to 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock. This is going to be happening on September the 15th. Probably the bigger change is for Tower. We're going to move that from 10.30 to 10. And really that's just, as I said a couple of weeks ago, I've only managed to get to Tawa twice now, twice now since we moved to the morning. And this configuration will allow me to do uh, that more often in the sense I'm not going to do it obviously every week, but, but once a month or whatever, or whenever we need to, uh, it allows me, that configuration allows uh, me and uh, Pastor Anita from times to get down there and it, it works the other way as well. And so that's going to be beginning on September the 15th. So, so it means for some of you, you can, you, you can sleep in a little later on the 11 o'clock uh, 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 services. Just just be there at 11. Can I hear an amen if you're, yeah, yeah, there's all the people in the night. So those are, those are the announcements. Those are the announcements. But it is Father's Day. It is Father's Day. It is Father's Day. I've got the t-shirt. I've got the t-shirt. You like my t-shirt? It says, some, some grandpas play bingo, but real granddads ride motorcycles. Come on. <laughs> I found this. I was like, I, I'm going to wear that today. I love being a grandpa. I love being a grandpa. I, lo- I love it, love it, love it. Uh, Rosie came to me last week and said, Papa, Papa. I said, yes, Rosie. She said, can you put my shoes on? I said, I can try but I don't think they'll fit me. That was a dad joke. Dad joke, come on. You know, I always scour the world every year, every Father's Day for, for the best dad, dad joke. And it's not easy, best dad jokes. But I found a few. I thought these were good. I, I always start off. What, what do you call a moose, a moose with no name? Anonymous. Come on, that's... Okay, I'm going to talk to this side because they're so quiet. Anonymous. Okay, the police have just arrested the world's tongue twister champion and they've said they're going to give him a tough sentence (laughs) I used to be afraid of hurdles I got over it (laughs) two cannibals were eating a clown when one said to the other does this taste funny to you (laughs) come on that's good eh? right that's a that's good that's good that's good How much time have I got? Oh, no, I've got no time at all. <laughs> I was going to tell my parrot joke, but I have to leave it. I, 
Oh, no, I, re- I really don't have a lot of time. Okay. <laughs> and some of you would have heard of it. It's good. It's the, one of the young ones I remember. The, 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 the parrot joke. You, you, you know it. it, it well, I, I don't know if you know it. They'll be dumb if you know it. But it's like, you know, the, 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 the man's, his pipe bursts in his house, and he's like, oh, man, I need to, to, to get a plumber. And he, so he calls the plumber, and the plumber says, I'll be around in, in, in about an hour's time. And meanwhile, he got a call. He got a call. The, the, the man got a call and he had to go out. But see, the man had a parrot. And so the parrot was there by the door and in, in a few minutes, the, the plumber turned up. And it sounds better in British. <laughs> and the plumber knocks on the door and the parrot's there and the parrot goes, who is it? And he goes, it's the plumber and I've come to fix your pipes. And the parrot goes, who is it? And he goes, it's the plumber, and I've come to fix your pipes. The parrot goes, who is it? And he's like, it's the plumber, and I've come to fix your pipes. The parrot goes, who is it? And he goes, it's the plumber, and I've come to fix your pipes. And then he has a heart attack, drops dead. The man, after an hour, he comes back and sees the guy fallen there and he goes who is it and the parrot goes it's the plumber and he's come to fix your pipes <laughs> come on that was a good come on there was a <laughs> do you like that one sam there's a yeah, good plumber joke <laughs> but dads we celebrate you today i got my dad here he's uh how old are you dad Way old, 86, 86, 86. And uh, they said he was going to be dead a couple of years ago, but he's still here doing <laughs> uh, ch- churches. He's been a miracle. Like they just said, they, they wrote, wrote him off. But my dad's tough, I want to tell you. He's, uh, uh, he, he's tough. Can't, can't keep a good man down. And if you're here and you haven't bought anything for your father and you're wondering what to, uh, to get, I, I've... I've heard from extensive research, a five-year study, and the results are overwhelming that if you're wondering what to give your dad, 85.3% of dads, what they really want you to give them is a nap. Come on, someone. Yeah. <laughs> Just give them a nap today, please. All the dad said. The Apostle Paul, we better get to... <laughs> I've got 10... No. Uh, the Apostle... Paul, speaking to men, said this as he was wrapping up his letter to the Corinthian church. He said this. He said, be watchful, stand firm. Are they going to come? Is it coming up? Is it coming up? Or is it not working? Okay, maybe it's not working. I don't know. Are you saying it's not working? Okay, you should keep going. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith. And then it says, act like men. Act like men. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. Act like men. And of course, in today's world, some will go, well, what does that even mean to act like men? What does that even even mean? I, I, I think many men will go, even here, if we're honest and if we're genuine, we'll actually go, well, I, I, Pastor, I don't know what that means. What does it mean to act like men? Because, because sadly, we live in a fatherless generation. There's no, there's no doubt about that. And, and there are many stories out there of dad left when I was three or I never knew him or there was a divorce or some kind of uh, tragedy. And so people will say, Pastor, I don't know how to act. I, I don't know how to be a man. I don't know what that even means to act like a man. I, I, I've, not, I've not seen it lived out. I've not seen it modeled. I've not had any example to follow. And I don't know if you've thought about it. In, but when you think about the book of Genesis... In the book of Genesis, the first man, my, my namesake, 
kind of found himself in the same predicament. Uh, Think about it. Adam turns up, the first man, Adam turns up, created, wakes up in the garden, a full-grown man. He has no parents. He has no example. No other guy who he can learn how to act like a man. There's no other guy there who he can learn from. No, he, he, he just wakes up and he's got to figure it out. And of course, God's there, but, but he's God. He's God. And so Adam's the, he's the first man and he's, he's got to figure it out. He's got to learn how to, how to tend the garden, how to keep the garden. He's got to learn how to be a husband. He's got to learn how to be a father. And his kids, let's be honest. I mean, let's be honest about his family. His kids were a bit of a handful, especially one of them, Cain. And because of that, he had to deal with family tragedy. Abel. He had to figure it out. He he, he didn't know what it was to be a father. He's, He's got to learn in the midst of all of that, how to walk with God, how to follow God, how to obey God. There was no one else to show him the way he had to figure it out. And think about it. He's got he's to learn how to do all of these things. He's got to learn how to act like a man. And he's had no parent, no mentor to show him how. And I and I think for a lot of men who are maybe even sitting here right now, if we're honest, we'd go, that, that's kind of how I feel. Maybe you're saying, I wasn't trained for, for this. There was, there was no class in school how to be a man, how to be a dad. There was no class. There was a, no, no, nothing was set aside when I went to college for, I mean, they're setting aside all kinds of time for other stuff. Won't go there. But there was no class that trained us how to act like men or how, how to be a, be a dad. And so, so we weren't trained for this. We, we weren't prepared for this. I've, we've not seen it lived out. And so, so, so we've, we've somehow just arrived. And here I am. And I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm a father now. I'm a man now. And I'm just trying to figure all this out. And if that's you, I, I just want you to understand every man here today, every father here today, if that's you, if that's your experience, I just want to say, I get you. I get you. And of course, God is there, but God is there. And we know God is there. As, as, as Believing men, we know God is there, but sometimes, if we're honest, we, we, we still feel like, man, I've got to do this on my own. I've got to, I've got to nail this, but, but it's a, but truth be told, it's a battle, and sometimes, as men, we don't nail it. And yesterday, as I was thinking about this and just preparing this to, for today, the first two questions of the Bible came to mind as I was going through the, the story in the book of Genesis. The first two questions of the Bible came to my mind. And I, as I started to think about it, I thought, man, the, the first two questions of the Bible are, are two of the most saddest questions in Scripture. The first question, of course, in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 is, is, uh, did God really say question? Did God really say? And I've said, we've talked about it this year, where we we live in an environment now where the world is going in this uh, uh, woke and wild world that we're in, where where people are going, well, did God really say this? Did God really say that? And of course, in, in Genesis, it's not a new question. It was the first question asked in the Bible. And of course, who asked it? A serpent, a devil. It's not a new question. Did God really say? 
It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree? Actually, he didn't say that. He said, he said you can eat from any tree, just don't eat from that one. But did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And, and, and of course, this is sad. This is sad because what the serpent said led to the fall. And it is interesting to note, please don't get upset, ladies, and send letters. But the first question was to the woman from the serpent. But the second question, I, uh, which I think is the saddest question in Scripture, was addressed to the man from his God, from his Creator, who simply asked, where are you? Where are you? Genesis 3, verse 9, the Lord called to the man, where are you? I don't know if you thought about it, but isn't that like the, the saddest question? When the Creator asks his creation, where are you? And of course, the man's response, of course, only adds to the, to the pain when he replied, I, I, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And I don't know if you realize this, but there's a lot going on in this response. Four things. Actually, the man in his fallen nature says, look at them. Number one, I heard you. The man said, I heard God's voice. He knew God. The man knew God's voice. And I, and I want to just say, men, we, we know God's voice. We, we, we do life different. I, I thought I was saying up here, Ian was here rocking it out. And I said, Ian, come on, dance, joy, joy. But we feel joy on the inside. Come on, somebody. Just keep it on the low down. But we know his voice. He says, I heard you, I heard you. And I heard you, I know, I, 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 he, he knew God's voice. And, and then he said, number two, I, I was afraid. I heard your voice, number two, I was afraid. Why? Why was he afraid? Because he'd messed up. If he messed up, I was afraid. Why? Because I messed up. And number three, I, 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 I was naked, which really is saying because I've messed up, because I've messed up, I'm feeling ashamed. I'm feeling exposed. I, I, I'm feeling embarrassed. Because of that, number four, I hid. I hid. Another version says, I hid myself. I hid myself. I did this. I, I hid from you. How sad. Now let me explain something here which I think is important because, because when God asks the man, where are you? Understand God has not lost Adam. I mean, he's God. He knows God is not ignorant of Adam's hiding place. God has not lost Adam. Adam has lost God. God's not asking in, in what place, but rather in what condition are you? He was asking, where are you to bring him to confession? Where are you at? What's going on? Why are you hiding? And to every man and father here today, hear my heart. The truth is, he's still calling. And you've heard him, but many of you are hiding. You're hiding because you're, you're hurting. You're afraid somehow that you won't measure up because you, you keep messing up. And of course, that leaves you feeling ashamed and naked, exposed, Sometimes embarrassing, and, and so you hide yourself. You've hid yourself from his voice, the voice that still calls to the man, where are you? Where are you at? And this is our struggle as men many times. There's a song I heard a few months back. It's by a guy named Dax. I think he's a... Christian artist, but I wasn't listening to it because he was a 
Christian artist, a song touched my heart. It's called What, what It's Like to Be a Man. And for me, it captures this Genesis dilemma, this struggle, the pain we as men often feel in modern day language. I remember riding my motorcycle over Transmission Gully and I was playing it uh, on the uh, stereo thing. And as I was listening to it, I was just weeping and weeping, not because I was like, man, oh, I'm just struggling or, or whatever, but there, it just touched the core of my soul because it was, it was like I, I was feeling for, for, for men and how hidden and lost and the, the struggle and the battle, it just touched the, my man's soul, if you like. It was like this, this song just, just gets it. just gets the plight of men who, who are sometimes hiding, misunderstood, living in shame, told we're, we're toxic and that our masculinity is toxic. And this, this song for me just gets it. And it was interesting. I brought it into the creative meeting and our staff meeting who are, who, who are amazing, amazing. But they're all ladies. And I played it and I just started crying as I was playing it. And, as I was, and, and, and they're like, hmm, this is a bit heavy. And I was like, exactly, you just don't get it. Because we're different. And I think men are, many times have different battles, different struggles. The song starts with the words, I can't hide myself. I don't expect you to understand. I just hope I can explain it, what it's like to be a man. And I want to play it right now and, just, just, and then I'm going to wrap up. But I want us to listen to the word. And I know some of you are older here, so some of the rapping you might go, I can't understand that. <laughs> but I pray it would touch the core of your soul like it touched mine. Is it, I think it expresses the Genesis language and modern day language. That the many men in here will resonate with and understand. And for those who, I, I realize men are from Mars, women are from Venus, and all that kind of stuff, and I, 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 we're different. But this, is, this to me describes the battle. Would you play that song? And let's just listen for a few. And it's time to stop hiding too. I just want to say it's time to stop being afraid. Genesis goes on to tell us that God covered their shame, their nakedness, not with a fig leaf. It tells us in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothed them. And of course, to do that, blood was shed. He covered their nakedness and their shame. He, 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 he covered them. He did it. God did it. And again, what a picture that is of what Christ has done for us. He, he covered us. God's, I just want to say to every man here today, God's got you covered. And the God who covered Adam will cover you. The God who covered Adam's nakedness and his shame and his embarrassment will cover you. Jesus, the lion and the lamb of God who shed his blood. I want to say he's got you covered. He's covered our sin and our shame. We couldn't do it, but God did it for us. And because he did that for us, we don't need to hide we don't need to be afraid. We don't need to be afraid of his voice. Because he covered us, we can now again freely walk with God. And so my challenge here today, and against my exhortation to you is, I pray that you've heard his voice today, that you would come out of hiding. And understand he's, he's still calling and if you're, you're naked, just go, God, would you, would you cover me? God, would you cover me? God, I'm here. Because he's asking, where are you? Where are you at? Just 
saying, God, I'm here. Would you cover me? God, I surrender my life to you. Would you stand just for a moment? God, we, all of us, come here today just aware that you made a way. We couldn't do it. We were hiding in our sin and our shame, but you, you shed your blood on the cross. You, the Lamb of God, your skin was pierced that we might be washed and cleansed and covered. And so today is, especially to the men and to the dads here today, God, we, we, we're just saying we're done with hiding. God, help us become the man. You've made a way. Help us to become the man, the father. Yeah, we make mistakes. We mess up sometimes. But help us to become the man, the father the leader that you've called us to be in our homes, in our communities. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, you know, we started with 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. And so if you're asking, well, how do we live this out? How do we... How do we live this out? When Paul says, act like men, how do we, how do, we do it? Well, we're going to talk about that next week in part two. So I encourage you, if you visit, come again, and we'll dig a little bit more into this and how we can be better men. To all the fathers here today, the evangelists, the late great Billy Graham said, a good father is one of the most unsung, unpraised, unnoticed, and yet most valuable assets to our society. And I want to say I agree. And so to every father here today, I salute you. You're awesome. Come on, put our hands together. For the dad. Now, I think there's some hot dogs out there and some drinks for hot dogs for everyone. I think some, some beers for the dad, ginger beers, that is, uh, just to be clear. <laughs> But let me pray this blessing over you. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you, dads. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you shalom, peace. And everybody said, come on, one more clap offering to the king. Turn to the person next to you and say, let's get a hot dog. Come on, the service is over. God bless. <laughs>